Okay. So just a quick five slides on miliary tuberculosis. And so it consists of uh, recapping just for the sake of uh, going into the progression of it. And there's a table on the size and the frequencies and there's the development of the disease, which I'll explain and then show the radiological findings. And then there's a lung pathology. And I also mentioned a few, uh, I mentioned the symptoms, diagnosis and treatment briefly for everyone. So it's, we know it's the spread of the, the mycobacterium tuberculosis to the hilar lymph nodes by inhalation and this would cause a pathological reaction by the macrophages and the lymphocytes uh, which undergo transformation into the epithelioid and lung and cells which aggregate with the lymphocytes to form the classical tuberculous granu granuloma and TB is a multiple granu granulomanitis <laughs> um, disease and I'm trying to go through very quickly so when in the primary stage of TB, you will find gone focus and um, so what would usually happen in the reparative process, uh, the bacteria would be encased and then that is what you see, uh, which is the fibrous capsule, the caseous uh, capsule. And that would limit the spread of the bacilli and then you refer to that as the latent TBI. And moving into the site of the TB disease, um, with deepening disorders in the immune system, there are complications, as I would have mentioned. And development of the complications is facilitated by the late diagnosis of primary TB. And in primary TB, you have in the lungs and you that's where it will show on the x-rays the calcified uh, lesions but with TB it can spread uh, extra pulmonary in places such as the larynx, lymph nodes, pleura, brain, kidneys, bones and joints and, and then in, in the rare cases to all parts of the body through the blood stream. So development of MTB, as you will look here, you'll find that 70% of people who are exposed won't be infected, but 30%, right? Um, so there's the host pathogen interaction occurring. Um, so in 90% of the cases, you have the LTBI, latent tuberculosis infection. Uh, so that's where it's contained. But you'll find with persons, the remaining 10% developing a progressive primary tuberculosis. So during this phase, extensive lymphohematogenesis, meaning through the lymphatics and the blood circulation, dissemination as the spread to the various organs resulting in miliary tuberculosis. So I just want to mention here, as you see in this table, there's the factors why this would progress in children who are under four years old and people with a weakened immune system because their treatment would have, you know, immunosuppression being the result for their treatment for HIV um, patients and then uh, anti tumor necrosis factor alpha therapy um, then there's the reasons for like poverty malnutrition the bcg vaccination status which is the bacillus calmant guarine uh, vaccine and then um uh, for people who are older we refer to it as cryptic tuberculosis because uh, the onset is insidious and that's just to um, differentiate. But you find it a lot in persons who would have these um, influential factors. And 
The symptoms that you're looking for for miliary tuberculosis is weight loss, fever, chills, weaknesses, general discomfort, and difficulty breathing. Infection would go to the bone, the bone marrow, and that could be misunderstood or presented with uh, severe anemia and seen as leukemia. So from the caseous focus in the lymph nodes, the erosion of a caseous lymph node into a blood vessel, the spread from a tubercle formed into in the intima of the blood vessel, which is the layers, um, the caseating mediastinal, which is everything in the mediastinal uh, lymph nodes, every lymph node in there in that area, emptying into the thoracic duct, pulmonary miliary tuberculosis, discharging of a caseous focus into the branch of the pulmonary artery, caseating pulmonary focus empty into, into the pulmonary veins and systemic spread. So what I found was that there are two types of um, miliary tuberculosis, which is primary miliary, primary pulmonary miliary tuberculosis and systemic miliary tuberculosis. So for 20% of all reported cases, you have the miliary tuberculosis present in the primary stage, right? And I'll explain that. And then you'll only find 2% of all reported cases of the miliary tuberculosis being spread all over to the organs. And the favorite sites for the um, that spread for the patients in that 2% statistic is in the liver, in the spleen, in the kidneys, um, the fallopian tube, the meninges, and bone and other organs. And it's very common in Indian China and for the systemic tuberculosis, right? They, that's in 10 to 30 percent of adults and 20 to 40 percent of children. I didn't want to put this on the slide because I didn't want to have too many things distracting. So to explain uh, primary pulmonary tuberculosis, so we've established that this is basically a spread of an organism outside of the lungs. And um, so for the primary pulmonary tuberculosis, we're not looking at the organs outside of the lungs, but we're just looking outside of the alveoli. Um, so that is when the um, organisms drain through the lymphatics, enter the venous blood, and it circulates back to the lungs, different parts of the lungs. Um, so the systemic tuber miliary tuberculosis, the, organi the organism must reach the arterial blood, right? And so when the focus of the, the cases necrosis erodes into a pulmonary venue, um, because we know that the pulmonary venules contain the arterial blood and the venules form the pulmonary, go to the, towards the pulmonary vein. So, so you have your capillaries, your venules, your arterioles, and you have your veins, arteries. And the pulmonary veins take that blood to the left atrium, well then to the left ventricle, and then through the aorta, and then the arterial system is basically spreading this uh, tuberculosis uh, caseous focus throughout the body. And now we'll focus our attention on the radi radiological findings. Um, so we were familiar with rank complex, and that is the combination of the calcific lesions of the lungs and the lymph nodes. So this is referred to as the rank complex. Looking at this here, you will see on the x-ray. But specifically in miliary tuberculosis, you will find these uh, very pebble uh, millet-like uh, appearances, right? And the characteristic of this here, this is the lung. You, you'll see one to three 
millimeters in diameter, no joules, randomly distributed. And the diagnosis would have to be through examination of the culture of a sample from the infected area. Um, the skin test, tuberculin, the blood test to detect the tuberculosis, if, and then x-rays, which will definitely tell you which stage it would be as well. If you look at the spleen here, you see these uh, granulomas uh, in the same size. And the reason it is in the same size is because it's distributed and it arrives at the organs, at the tissues, at the same time and it develops in the same size. Um, here would be in the primary, this would obviously be the in the secondary stage of TB, right? Um, which would be true systemic. And in this here is you're looking at the lungs and that would be in, in pulmonary um, thing. Um, primary pulmonary miliary tuberculosis. Now we're coming to the end. So just to recap, so this guy is credited, John Jacob Manget of the 1700s, because he was the one who found in an autopsy small spots, similar to millet seeds, as I mentioned. And so it occurs when the bacilli spreads through hematogenic, lymphatic, venous drainage, and bronchogenic spread. And so if untreated, would kill the patient in a few days to weeks. That's how um, very lethal this disease is. And for the treatment, antibiotics, corticosteroids, sometimes surgery. But I just want to mention quickly um, the, the, the bacteria would be resistant to some of the antibiotics. And so you have one in cases where it's monoresistant, that's a particular bacteria, so you try another one. It's polyresistant, so it's two or more. And then multi-drug resistance, MDR, MTB, and then extensively drug resistance, XDR. And main signs is something that, you know, I could share with the group for everyone to get this. And these are the references. Thank you. If anyone has any questions. So I think it was a wonderful presentation. Uh, I like that you finally touched on a lot of the intricacies of miliary TB. But we're out of time, so let's leave and then come back in and have.